Welcome back. Today we're having a nice bowl of hog moths and chitlins with a green seasoning. Stay tuned. You're going to love this. Awesome. So our hog moths are soaking right now in vinegar and salt. We're going to let them soak for about 15-20 minutes. And then we're going to prep them. Okay, so now we want to wash the hog moths. And the salt and vinegar mixture. See the water's getting all dirty. Now we have a second sink that also has some vinegar and some salt in it. That we're going to be putting these in as we clean them. For the first wash and there will be several washes in it take my shears here cut me a piece off and what we're looking for is fatty deposits we want to get rid of them we don't want that we want to cut all those away and the best tool to use in this case would be scissors for kitchen shears. Make sure we get that. Cut that off. Go look it over real good. And there's some more fatty deposits there. Cut those off. Okay. Look it over front and back. Mm-hmm. Yep, let's get that on off there. Okay, that goes in the second sink. That one's good to go. To the next one. So we got a little fat there, we're gonna get rid of that. These big knots like this, get rid of those, definitely. See the big knots like that? Oh, that's got to go. Get rid of these big pots of fat. You don't want to eat that. Look at this. All this fat here. Take all this off. You don't want that. Check the back sides. that off and you want to do this with each one of your hog moths and this is just for the first wash here you, you'll see other fat as you wash it so I'm going to do this with the rest of the hog moths And I'll be back for the next step. Okay, now that we've done our first wash, now we're going to refill the sink up with just some plain water for now. Now we're going to cut the hog moths up. Um, and while we're cutting up, we're going to look to make sure that we didn't miss anything. And we're going to give them another wash. It'll be the third wash. Again, the best tool to use is, is kitchen shears. It makes cutting these so much easier. Mm -hmm. You want to make them a little bigger than bite sized pieces.
Because they'll shrink, but they just won't shrink as, as much as chitlins do. If you're doing this and you don't have kitchen shears, stop the video, go to the store, get some kitchen shears, and try again. The best advice I can give you. Make your life a whole lot easier. I mean, you could do this with a knife, sure. You just have to be real careful, though, because you need one, you need a very, very sharp knife. And two, you know, you don't want to cut any digits off. Okay, so we're going to cut the rest of these out. And we'll be right back. So they've all been cut up. Now for our final wash, we're going to put baking soda. That's going to neutralize the vinegar. We're going to wash it and then put it in the bag so we can put it in the fridge so we can do the chitlins. See, we cut them into little bite-sized pieces. You see that? It's little bite-sized pieces. And it doesn't matter if the water gets in the bag because we're going to be washing again before we cook it. Water is nice and clear, which is good. Not all dark and murky like it was when we started. And then we'll clean the sink out and then we'll start the chitlins. So here we have our dirty water. We have our dirty water here. Clean water. We're going to start cleaning, transferring from one sink to the other. So in this clean sink, we have uh, baking soda and we have salt. We're going to take our chitlin and we're start separating the membrane from the chitlin. See that? We're going to separate that. All of you just can see that. We separate that. We're going to get all the membranes off. You know, take your time; it'll come off. There we go. So this is the membrane that we got rid of. Toss that out. And we're gonna do that to all these chitlins. Grab a corner. You wanna make sure that you get the little, start from the corner. Don't start from the middle, get the corner. See that? Get the corner and pull it. Or the, not corner, but the edge. And you better pull it right off. It's not hard, it's just tedious. You want to do that with all your chitlin. Or chitterlings, as some people want to call it. Just take your time. And you get it. You want to get all the fat and debris off of it. Check it. Just make sure none got left behind. Now, especially on the big ones, you want to double check. Looks good. Looks good. And in it goes. Some people don't clean the membrane off. And then they worry why they wonder why their house smells like good God Almighty when they start cooking chitlin. You know, you gotta get that membrane off there. Some people pick their chitlins, you know. You can pull the membrane off or you can pick it. Uh, picking it is they just look at the, look for the dark spots and they just pull off the dark spots. No, you can't pick your chitlins. You gotta pull that membrane off. 
you know, plan on taking a couple hours at least to take care of these chitlins. And the little veins get them too. Now this is 10 pounds of chitlins that I'm doing, so it's not that much. But for the most part, I'm the only one in the house that eat them, so it's, it's, it's enough to satisfy me, I guess. 10 pounds of chitlins, I can eat that with my eyes closed. Now I probably will. Yeah, but you gotta set aside a couple hours for this. Don't expect to be here real quick and doing it. But that ain't happening. I don't really care what kind of chitlins you, you use, whether it be, you know, Aunt Bessie's or not, you're gonna spend some time. Although Aunt Bessie's I hear is pretty easy to clean, but you still gotta have to spend some time. The reason I say that is because if you like chitlins the way I like chitlins, and if Aunt Bessie's is easy to clean, you're going to purchase more chitlins. Purchase more chitlins, that's more cleaning time. Can't get away from it. Can't get around it. Well, I'm not going to let you watch the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and clean these and then we're going to like put all the membranes off of the chitlins. And look at this. Out of two bags, I had about a half a bag of waste that I cleaned off of there. So please, even though it says pre-clean, make sure you clean the chitlins because there's a lot of waste. Now we're going to do our second wash. Put in the sink here. You want to wash until your water becomes clear instead of that raw pinkish color. And it's probably going to take about you know, three, four washes, maybe even five, depending on how you wash yours. Me, I use a combination of vinegar, baking soda, and salt. And that's also going to help curb some of the smell, too. So we're going to let our chitlins soak in some baking soda for about 10 minutes and then we're going to bag it up for okay. later. Now we're going to put the chitlins in the bag with the hog moths and put those in the refrigerator until later on this evening. We don't need all too much excess water. Even though the chitlins are going to hold some water, you can't get rid of all the water. And remember, before we cook it, we're going to wash it again. Because you don't want to cook it in this water that it's going to be sitting in.
Okay. That's going to go back in the fridge. So later on, we're going to use some MDR seasoning for our chitlins. We have a cup of water. We have two tablespoons of minced garlic. We have four uh, small bouillon cubes. We have our onions, our cilantro, green bell peppers, red bell peppers, and celery. Then we're going to blend this up and then we'll be ready to add into the chitlins. Now the cilantro, I'm putting cilantro in there because the cilantro is going to help kill the smell if you have any smell. You shouldn't have too much if you clean it as good as I clean it. Uh, mine aren't the best, but you know, you see what I did to clean it. I was real thorough with it. Well, yeah, cilantro is going to help you kill that. Okay, okay, so now we're going to add our water, one cup of water. Add our garlic. Sorry, our onion. And this is one rather large onion. And our celery. Our red bell pepper. And our cilantro. And some of our green bell pepper. Blend this up. All right. Now we're going to add the rest of our green bell pepper. Now we're going to add our bouillon cubes. It's not, it's just going to give a little bit of flavor, but it's, it's not going to make it taste like chicken. So you don't have to worry about that. And of course, this is optional. I mean, you don't have to put, you know, bouillon cube. You know, you could go chicken broth cup of chicken broth, you know, or you can go no chicken broth, completely up to you, but this is just the way I do it. Okay, now let's clean this up. And there we go. Now we're going to put this in a jar and put it in the refrigerator. All right. Put this in a jar. And the reason I blended it up is because I wanted to completely break down and disintegrate while the chitlins are cooking. That's the only reason. You know, some people when they eat chitlins, you know, it's, the chitlins are full of vegetables. They, they don't want to eat the vegetables. But this way they won't see the vegetables. They still get the benefits of having the vegetables. So it's so nice. our chitlins are in the pot. We're going to turn the oven, uh, turn the stove on to medium. And we're going to cook these or let this boil about 15 20 minutes and then we're going to drain the water and do it one more time okay so now we're on our second boil uh, i on the first boil i didn't add any water to it 
because it, has, it, has, it carries enough water on its own. I poured that off and I rinsed it. And then I reintroduced it to the pot. Now I put enough water in to cover it. Now we're going to let this come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to let it boil for 15 minutes. And we're going to drain it okay, for the last so time. Back. So now the second boil is done. I've poured that water off. And now I've put the chitlins back in the pot. And I covered it with water. Uh, so now we can actually start cooking it. And you might ask, why did I drain the water off twice? Um, one, it helps get rid of the excess uh, impurities that may still be in the chitlins and the hog moths. Want to get rid of the impurities. And then two, you to get rid of a lot of that grease and that oil. You know, that stuff will give you, you know, hiccups and acid reflux. So I want to get rid of that. And now we can actually start cooking the chitlins. Now we'll add, you know, the white pepper, a little bit of salt, and our green seasoning. Uh, and the crushed red, uh, uh, crushed, uh, red pepper flakes. Okay, so now we want to add about a teaspoon of the white pepper. You know, be careful with the white pepper because it's actually hotter than the black pepper. Now we add a few shakes of the crushed red pepper flakes. And now we want to add half of our green seasoning. And then in about an hour, hour and a half, we're going to add the other half. Stir that in. I'm gonna let this cook. Total time is gonna be about three hours, maybe three and a half hours. And remember, in about an hour to hour and a half, we're gonna add the other half of the green seeds. So you can see the seasonings in there very nicely. You can smell all the aromatics from the seasoning, and so you don't smell as much of the uh, gaminess of the meat. And your, my house smells nice. It doesn't smell like sewage. It doesn't smell like you know crap. It smells like I'm cooking meat, and that's what you want. Okay, now we're at the halfway point. Now we're gonna add the remaining of our green seasoning. Stir it in. And this is gonna break down as it cooks, so you don't have to worry about that. And a lot of people ask, why do I wait so long to season my chitlins and hog moths? It's because if you don't let them tighten up or constrict, you know, the seasons will get trapped inside the coils, if you will, of the chitlins. So you then if you do if that happens, you might have a bite of chitlins that is just full of pepper or full of a seasoning and it just it's not a good look not a good look but if you follow the way I do it and you boil it and pour it off twice you won't have to worry about it all right as a matter of fact you know what I'm gonna give you a peeky give you a little peek look at this there we go. Seasonings are looking nice. Yeah. No complaints. And the house smells delicious. Bonus. Okay. So for the last 45 minutes, we're going to take the top off. So it can reduce. So the fluids can reduce in here. Gonna be perfect. The seasoning is breaking down nicely. It's gonna turn to a nice gravy. Let me give you a look see. See here. You wanna see that? A little light action for you. 
See that? And we're gonna let that reduce. Probably by about half, it should reduce by half. And um, we should be good okay, to go. So, we know the chitlins are done. So let's taste a little bit of chitlin. See here. Mm hmm. Yep. Milk's in your mouth. Grab another one. Now, we want to see if the hog moths are done. They should be able to be cut easily with a fork. And it is done. Let me taste it. Mm-hmm. Taste the other one. Mm. And that is good. Success. If you like this this um, recipe, definitely try it for yourself. If you use my directions. Your house will not be smelling like trash or crap. It'll smell fragrant and aromatic without seasonings. Give it a shot. That being said, this is Shraw Shraw, and I'm out.